Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to um, our community building event we have today. On behalf of Red Hat and all the participating companies, we're super excited to have you guys here. I think we have a lot of great sessions today where we're going to learn a lot about what others are doing in this ecosystem and how we can build a community. Um, don't forget to join our closing session today where we're going to talk more about where we're at with that community effort and how you guys can join and participate with us. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joel to say a couple words. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm Joel Moses. I'm the CTO of Systems and Platforms for F5. Uh, I'm particularly pleased to be participating in this event, which is the culmination of a very long series of informal discussions between Red Hat Intel and ourselves, F5, about how to go about provisioning, using, and plumbing in IPU and DPU hardware uh, in a markedly better way than the one to which we've been accustomed with SmartNix, which is frankly a process of pain followed by a marathon of maintenance. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the leadership of Dave Schmidt, F5's architect now emeritus, who conceived of and launched these conversations who, and who has long been a voice for advanced hardware in the entire industry, uh, all the way from the DPDK days, whose shoes that I fill is I, this moves from a discussion into an industry working group, a full industry working group. Uh, I've been heartened to see that the industry uh, has uh, some of the same needs and that a lot of you uh, and, and exactly who of you need this sort of thing. Uh, and who have agreed to lend their support. And I can't wait to see what we accomplish together. Chris. So this is Susan Bobholtz. I am your host for today. I'm from Intel. I'd like to introduce you to Nick McEwen, who's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Intel's Network and Edge Group. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is pretty exciting. Uh, it's great to, great to be here, welcome. Um, as we just heard, there are a number of people who have been working hard to put this event together, talking over a number of months, <clears throat> and in some cases years, trying to figure out uh, how we can make this open ecosystem work for the uh, programmable infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> so I'd like to start by, uh, by, by just talking about names. You know, we're a group of people who are coming together around a what's really kind of an exciting new open source initiative uh, for the for the networking ind industry broadly defined and uh, you know these the, these uh, groups sometimes uh, you know bring together people with passionate views passionate ideas about the technology that we should use the hardware that we should use the approaches that we should take and sometimes we get a little hung up on a on a name, and uh, so I just wanted to sort of point this out to 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 start with um, that uh, you know we're, we're there's a quote that Rob Sherwood reminded me of um, that we've both heard Vince Cerf say, which is uh, engineers are really good at uh, la la labeling and branding things. So we would have probably named Kentucky Fried Chicken something like uh, Hot Dead Birds, and we would have seen where that would have gone to would have gone eventually. And we've seen this happen throughout our industry as a whole. At some point, we're going to have to not only assemble all of our ideas, our great ideas, band together in order to be able to work towards something, we're going to probably have to come up with a name. For the moment, we have something which, uh, frankly, I thought was a little bit dull, open programmable infrastructure event or OP event. Uh, but we can, spend, uh, we can spend some time trying to figure out what we're going to call ourselves over time. But I do think that the opportunity before us is is a, an exciting one. Um, as many of you know, uh, and, and, and I've been working in for about 15 years to try and open up the networking industry as a whole uh, to make it more software defined, software friendly, so that uh, primarily we can move the infrastructure to software, hopefully open source software for the ecosystem as a as a whole and i've worked with many of you here on this call today and uh, it's great to see some familiar faces as we embark on what i think could be a catalyzing event to bring together many of the things that we've all wanted to do over uh, more than a decade now so to put this a little bit into context the uh let, let, let's think about um you know the the scope of the opportunity and the the the, the ecosystem that we're trying to influence. Um, you know, you, we've all said, and I, I know I've said many times that our industry as a whole needs to move from fixed function hardware 
where things are baked into baked into hardware, baked into silicon by by chip designers who, frankly, have never operated big networks themselves, to to an ecosystem where we have a programmable infrastructure. Uh, which could be a regular CPU, it could be something that's more of an accelerator, it could be a programmable switch, it could be a programmable 5G base station, but where the developer, the, the owner of the infrastructure, the owner and operator of the problem that is trying to be solved, has their own destiny under their control through software. And so I think it's really our job to think through how we put into the hands of those who own and operate the biggest, the smallest, the most interesting, the newest networks and systems in the world, to put into their hands the keys that enables them to bring new capabilities, bring new features, to make their systems more reliable, more secure, or just to be able to differentiate and compete with their competitors in order for their business to, to do better. And that really, I think, is the job ahead of us. Whether we're operating at a cloud data center on the left-hand side of this chart, whether we're operating in the core of the internet, whether we're operating at a colo facility, the network edge, or an on-premise uh, device that is uh, that, that's an IoT system, a factory automation. Because this transformation, this transformation to software uh, it just strikes me again and again that it's happening everywhere. It started in the data center. It happened in the telco networks. It's happening in factories. It's happening in cars. It's happening in warehouses. It's happening in hospitals. Everywhere we look, that move to software definition of the, uh, of the infrastructure is all about putting the control into the hands of developers to create more agile, more faster moving systems that they can improve them for them for themselves. And you know, as some of you know, I took this took, took this role at Intel over the last few few months. Um, I've been a professor at Stanford for 25 years. And uh, and you might be wondering why on earth would you take a, a big corporate role after the cushy life of being in academia for a, for a long time? Well, it was the opportunity to help shape this industry. That was the thing that caught my, uh, caught my interest. And that's really what we are all collectively, collectively doing. I've been spending a lot of time learning about 5G and what's happening there with virtualized RAN, et cetera. And that again is the move towards software, bringing that technology move of allowing customers, allowing those who are deploying, whether it's new 5G or building the equipment to sell to those who deploy 5G, to move the technology that was originally developed for public macro cells to private 5G operating in factories and so on, so that they can get that low latency, more reliable, managed network links. Frankly, those people who are deploying factories don't particularly care that they're using private 5G. They just want a reliable, fast, low latency link that has SLAs and that they can manage. How do you do it? You know, a little bit of chip technology, the rest is software. It's all about the software. And as soon as you've solved this problem in one place, you can modify and tweak it super easily so that everyone can benefit, everyone throughout the whole ecosystem. That's what's happening. It's kind of inevitable at this point. It's just a question of time. And I think that the opportunity that we have as a team is in order to be able to create the technology, create the ecosystem in order for that to, to happen. So <clears throat> at, the end of, uh, at the end of today, um, the, the organizers of the event, the various uh, teams and people and individuals and companies that have come together today, um, we, we really hope that we'll have a, uh, a good sense of what has been done so far, the ideas that we can put out on the table. But then, much more importantly, tomorrow, we want to have some group working sessions to hear from what you, everyone else thinks as well to contribute to this project so that together we can come up with a with an action plan for going forward. We're all bringing our own pieces of the puzzle to the, to, to the picture and uh, together we're going to try and piece this together. It'll be a bit of an ugly fit to start with, of course it is, because everyone comes with their own ideas and their own, uh, and their own thoughts and sometimes their own agenda and sometimes their own commercial products. That's fine, that's okay. 
what we're looking here to do is to bring all of that together in a way such that the whole is bigger than the individual parts. And I think that's really at the end of the day why each of us is here. We all believe in a vision of a more software defined network ecosystem. And we all have some passion, some peace to bring, and that we hope that the whole will be bigger as a consequence. Sometimes though, as we do that, we need to give up some of our own ideas and of our own pet, uh, pet projects and our own uh, uh, attachments and perhaps a little bit of religion occasionally in order to be able to compromise and find a common solution. If there are anything that I have noticed and you've probably seen this happen before is when you bring together lots of people who have sort of disparate ideas that they've been thinking about for a while, where they fail, they tend to fail because everyone gets too attached to their own idea. So there's compromise that is, is essential here. Um, listening, not just listening to talk, but listening to hear and to understand what, what others are bringing to the table and seeing how we can come up with the best possible uh, sort of combined solution uh, together as we as we go forward. And I think that that is the art of making such a such a uh, uh, such an ecosystem fruitful. So this is this is not about one company's view. This is not uh, about one particular uh, one particular agenda. It really is for everyone, whether they're silicon vendors, software companies, cloud service providers, to come share your views, to participate. Um, and uh, bring your particular piece to this overall puzzle. And if you come without a particular piece, that's fine too. Uh, there's, uh, it's always good to have people to, to, help, uh, to help move this forward. And uh, hopefully by the end of this two days, we'll have a, a better, larger view than we all entered, uh, entered today. So to put cards out on the table, um, you know, I'm uh, currently with, uh, with Intel, where I'm running the Network and Edge group. And uh, this is Intel's puzzle piece that we're contributing to the, to the puzzle. And um, this is the, what we have been referring to as the Infrastructure Programmer Developer Kit. It was originally motivated by our IPUs, the Infrastructure Processing Units, and our programmable Tofino switches, really looking for a way to have an open, an open source ecosystem to allow the industry to really grow around a common way. This is not tied, it's not meant to be tied to a particular solution, a particular chip. Um, but of course, it'll have baked in some assumptions, some thoughts on uh, architectural thoughts. And at the end of the day, you have to put a stake in the ground, but it should work for what people refer to as IPUs, DPUs, CPUs. And uh, we have some pieces that we've already put together, some pieces that work on FPGA NICs as, as well, um, and, uh, and some data center switches too. So this happens to be our piece of the puzzle. We're happy to contribute it. We're happy to look for uh, ways that it can be useful to this ecosystem. Um, there's going to be more about this particular IPDK in, um, in Dan Daly's talk, uh, which I think is today at 9.30 a.m. So you can learn more about it, uh, more about it then. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to hand it over in a moment, uh, but I just want to say I'm super excited that we're doing this. I think that there are many pieces of the open source ecosystem for programming data planes in, in, in networks that we can bring together under a common umbrella. I would love to see that happen because then we can all work together, pull together to create this big open source ecosystem together. So I look forward to working with you and looking forward to a great couple of days here. Back to you. Susan. Thanks, Nick.